สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. Today I am finally making a dish that's been requested again and again and again. It is a Northern Thai curry by the name of Gang Hang Le, and it is braised pork belly in this curry paste that's full full of spices. It's rich. It's comforting. It's so. Delicious, and finally, you're gonna be able to make it at home. So let's get started. As always, we're gonna start out with the curry paste. So I have here some dry chilies. So I'm using two big, mild ones for some color, and also some little ones for some heat. You don't have to make this spicy at all if you don't want to. I'm using wahio peppers. In Thailand, you would use prick chi fa, okay, which is our bigger, milder chili. And I'm just gonna, as always, as you've seen me do this so many times. Grind these up in my coffee grinder. Ta-da! Ooh, and that's that for the chilies. The rest of the curry paste ingredients are gonna sound pretty familiar if you've done this before. Some shallots, some garlic, and some turmeric. I'm using fresh, but you can use powder instead if you'd like. Some lemongrass and galangal, and of course, it's a Thai curry after all. We're gonna add a little bit of shrimp paste to here, and all I'm gonna do, as always, is throw everything. Into this jug, and I'm going to use my immersion blender to blend it all up. And this, as you now know, is my favorite way to make curry paste: is by using an immersion blender. It's just so fast and so efficient. Let's hurry up and close that so we don't continue to perfume Adam's apartment. <laughs> All right, so now that that's ground up to a certain degree, let me get rid of this for a second. We're going to add our dry ingredients. So the dry chilies. Going in, and this is the part that makes it a gang hangle. I'm going to add hangle curry powder. So this is just a blend of spices. In Thailand, you can actually buy this in the north, or you can just make it yourself. I made this myself, and I will include the recipe in the written portion. Or a little secret: you can also use garam masala, the Indian garam masala, instead. Everybody has a different recipe, so there's no like one correct specific way of making the hanglei curry powder. As long as you like the smell of it, it'll be totally fine. Okay, adding all of that into here. <coughs> it would be easier if I were making more than this, <laughs> but for now, this will do. <coughs> And that's it. So I have my big wok here, which is nice for this because there's a bunch of stuff to toss around. And I have some pork belly that I cut into big chunks, and you want to make sure the chunks are big because they shrink quite a bit once they cook. And in a dry wok, I'm just gonna place these chunks of pork belly in there, and the fat will slowly render out. And you don't want the heat to be too high, otherwise the pork will burn before it has a chance to render. This is one of my favorite ways to eat pork belly. It's in a gang hang le. It's so good. So we'll let that go. Woo! So the first going to stick because we didn't put any oil in it. But after a while, once it starts to brown, it will release itself. So don't rush it. And we're gonna do that for four sides. Woohoo! And browning is flavor, so do not skip this step. My pork belly is nice and brown. Now I'm gonna add my pork spare ribs. Now these are actually the tips of the spare ribs that have been chopped. And the reason why I like to add the ribs in is because the ribs have bones, and the bones will actually help flavor the sauce. You could just do all pork belly. You don't have to add any other kinds of pork, or you can just do all pork ribs. But trust me, you want the pork belly for this. Gonna give these a quick toss. I don't really need to brown the ribs. The curry paste will now go in, and you're gonna just toss the pork and the curry paste. Get the curry paste sort of frying in all of that pork fat. Oh, that's starting to smell good. All those spices are coming out. I can smell cinnamon and star anise and cumin. All right. It gets super easy from here. I'm just gonna add water. This is a coconut milk-free curry, just until it covers the pork. Barely cover. You don't want too much liquid here. That looks good. Now, seasoning. So I'm gonna go in with, of course, some fish sauce. Just a little bit for now. There's not gonna be that much liquid left in the end, so you don't want to add too much fish sauce at this point. Now we want to deepen and darken the the color. 
and I am going to use some black soy sauce for that. Now black soy sauce, we use a lot in Thai cuisine. It's, it's not very salty, it's very heavy and molasses-y flavor and as you can see, it darkens the color almost instantly. I'm also gonna add some dark brown sugar. Now northern Thai cuisine uses a lot of different ingredients that really differ from central Thai cuisine, which is what most people are familiar with, and sort of molasses -y things is one of them. I'm going to add a whole bunch of tamarind, so this is tamarind um, concentrate or tamarind juice as I like to call it, because this is a sort of a sweet and sour type curry. And that is it. Now you're just gonna let this go at a low simmer for an hour and 45 minutes to two hours until the pork is fork tender. Mmm, look at that. Now you know that is gonna taste good. I mean, I don't even have to tell you. That looks delicious. A couple more things to add before we finish. And the first thing is whole cloves of garlic, okay? Now, before you freak out, we're gonna let the whole cloves of garlic cook slowly for about 15 to 20 minutes until they become melty and soft, like roasted garlic. Mm gonna be so good and sort of one of the more iconic features of Gang Hang Le. Some ginger, lots and lots of julienne ginger. In Thailand, we also like to add whole shallots, but our shallots are super small. So if you don't have that, you can also add pearl onions, which I had prepared and peeled and everything and just didn't bring them. Oh well, so if you have pearl onions, throw them in as well. And this is just gonna cook for another 15-20 minutes until the garlic is soft and then it is done. So get your rice on. Ooh, yes. This is the perfect consistency. You can make it so there's more sauce, but I think a thick, what we call kluk klik in Thai like this is just perfect. The garlic is a stained yellow from all the turmeric that's in there. Now, if you want, you can get some extra julienne ginger and do a final garnish, kind of like this, I'll show you. There we go. And then people know that there's lots of ginger in this dish, and if they don't like ginger, they can skip it. Always, always have this with rice, of course. Let me take that piece right there. Oh. Grab some garlic and some sauce. Oh. Ooh, the garlic. Mm. There is nothing quite like the texture of a slowly braised pork belly. You know, that bouncy texture that kind of melts in your mouth and then you get a little bit of the meaty chew from the part that's that's meat, oh, so good. And that the flavor of this curry is so complex. It's not that spicy, but it's just so full of spices. Even though it doesn't have any coconut milk, it's rich and luscious. And that ginger provides that kick just to balance everything out. This is something to make. And it's not only something to make, it's something to make when you want to impress people because trust me, they will be impressed. So I hope you give this a try. The recipe, as always, will be on hotthaikitchen.com. And when you make it, send me a photo on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Oh, and I'm also on Pinterest as well, for those of you who are pinners. And if you haven't subscribed to the show, make sure that you do so you don't miss an episode and click that little bell icon so you get a notification every time I post a new video. If you love the show and you want to support us, check out our Patreon link in the description below and I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal. And finally, you're going to be able to make it at home. So let's get started.